There's no one there. No one. I've, uh, I've tried both, the one for today and the one for Wednesday, nobody. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I'm in on right now. Yeah, see if you can join it. There we go. We are now recording. Well, I guess we're going to start, friends. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, but at least it's a wet cough and not a dry one. So, we're good with that. Um, so, this is fine and show homes. Uh, it's a power session eight, and we're going to make your buyer's dream a reality. Um, the takeaways of this chapter is this session is going to cover how to find and show homes to your buyers, as well as how to deal with objections during the process. We're going to learn techniques for qualifying homes to show home, develop your showing skills, practice scripts that will help buyers in the decision making process. Um, so I'm not going to record. Da, 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 da. Okay. We got to do the daily calls. We're going to qualify some properties, point out benefits and buyer objections, and show some homes. Well, we're not actually going to show homes today, but. Okay, let's next slide this. Find and show homes. Well, let's get started. Expectations and the action reveal. Um, we've got one video. I'm gonna move this right over here. Give me a second. Boom, boom. Hi, David. Hi, Anita. And hi, Mr. or Mrs. iPhone. Um, And Anita, I'm going to mute you. Um, so for the videos, contact note cards. Everybody have your stuff ready to rock and roll for putting it, you know, do you have your note cards? Anyone? No? Yes? No? Okay. Um, today's expectations for you cappers in training, well, one is capped numerous times. David is a CIT, and I don't know about a native or iPhone. But we're going to learn techniques for qualifying, qualifying uh, homes in final mind. When we develop your showing skills, we're going to practice powerful scripts that will help buyers in the decision-making process. Uh, to maximize your learning, your Ignite faculty is committed to, and that's me, show great role model videos in class when applicable. There is at least one. Uh, devote the majority of time to activities in class and role model what it takes to be highly, success, highly successful. Guide and support the cappers in training by holding them accountable in their daily 10-4 and mission. And during the phone call activity, make calls along with the class, which I will do. Oops, back to my... So your daily 10-4, as you all know, is add two new contacts, 10 new contacts to your database, speak with 10 people in your database, and write 10 notes. And weekly, you need to preview 10 homes. Not as easy these days, but we're doing what we're doing. Um, we're going to do some lead gen, so let's go to page eight. It's actually easier if they got the videos up. What videos? Their home preview videos. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, I didn't know what you meant. <laughs> yes. Oh, hi, success. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, so we're going to review the mission assignments and get your questions answered if you have any. We're going to answer questions about any videos watched. And we're going to provide your ahas from the mission. And then we're going to make real play calls in class. And I'm going to do that too. Okay. So has everybody done your daily 10-4 uh, for yesterday? No one? Not uh, I, I'm the iPhone. My name is Devin Green. Hi, Devin. I did. I, I, I didn't get to do all of them, but I mm -hmm. did. I did do some of them. Okay. Trying what to about, build. Uh, build. Is there twice? Huh? And Anita is. The, well, she was there twice. That's okay. Right there. 
Okay, so for the next, we'll go over the script for, uh, for what we're going to do, and we're going to be calling personal and professional service industries, um, creating referral partnerships with business owners that you have done business with. So basically, if you know a good, uh, good house painter or a good plumber or, 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 these are the people that you want to be calling uh, for the next 20 minutes and see if you can get them to, um, if you can get them on your referral sheet and they will put you on theirs. So does everybody have page nine? Are we at page nine? I'm just going to unmute everyone. You know what? That's what we're going to do. There. Everybody. My man Terrence, how you doing? I'm here. I just have background me uh, stuff going on, so I don't, you know, so I'll mute until I say something. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll just keep everybody muted. It's fine. Okay. So you want to start with hi, who your name is, um, uh, or hi, whoever the business owner is. My name is Jeffrey Pettit with Keller Williams, and I'm in the process of creating a list of preferred business, service, business and service providers to give to my clients. Since I frequently client, have clients asking for a good architect, landscaper, dentist, or other business, I only want trusted companies to refer them to. Since I have an excellent service, since I've had excellent service from you, would you and your business be interested in being included? If they, if they say yes, it's great. I'd like to establish these professional referral relationships to help grow each other's business as well. So if I were to refer clients to you, would you be willing to refer your clients that are looking to buy or sell a home to me with the assurance that I will provide them with the high level of customer service that you expect? And if they say yes, you say, excellent. How about we confirm each other's contact information so that we can get started? And that's what we're gonna do. And then it's basically the same, um, instead of, you know, I've had, if I've done work with you, you've, you're, I've heard good things about your company. So. Uh, I'm going to, somebody sent me a note. Okay, cool. There we go. Let me take that over here. There we go. Um, all right, back one. So for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to take off, uh, I'm going to mute myself and turn off my camera and I'm going to make some phone calls. Are we ready for that? So we will come back at 1.40. Okay? Okay.
Right, everybody back? Yeah. Cool. I'm back. Well, I'm Michael's back. David, success. Anita, team A. I'm back. Excellent. Thank you. And, right, well, let's continue. So what did everybody take away from that? How did everybody do? No one? No one wants to share how they did? Juan Michael? You're never at a loss for words. I went pretty good. I've talked to two people, one's an electrician, and then um, another person from ADT. So uh, basically, I just talked to them and asked them uh, were they interested in buying or selling, and then I uh, told them about like they can use me as a referral if they know anyone else that's buying or selling. Uh, the one from ADT said that he uh, goes in a lot of people's house for uh, that thinking about selling or they talk about buying homes. So he said uh, he'll refer me. Good. That sounds positive. Nice work. Yes. Anyone else? Anita, Terrence, success, David. This is Anita, no success for me. No, what happened? Uh, quite a few of the numbers were disconnected or something. Oh. And um, the person, I, the one person I did talk to, they're not interested at all. In being part of your referral group? Right. Wow, that's strange. I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't want to be part of a referral group. Um, I talked to my roofer <coughs> during this time uh, for two reasons. One, he's got to come back, come back and fix my roof. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I asked him how he felt about it and he was like, you know, he'd love it and he will definitely uh, recommend me as well. So positive. And hopefully he's going to come back on Monday and fix my roof. Okay. So let's go now to the next slide. Get your head in the game. Finding the right home quickly is a win-win. And we're going to discuss the NAR statistics on page 11. So the journey, the journey from buyer consultation to offer is the most exciting and rewarding part of working with buyers. Finding the right home as quickly as possible is a win for the buyer and a win for you because you can work with as many buyers as possible. Here are the NAR statistics that will help with some of the, with some home search process. The typical home buyer started search, uh, slow down, Jeffrey. <laughs> the typical home buyer searched for 10 weeks and viewed 10 homes. 92% of buyers use the internet in their home search process. Who are the other 8%? What 8% don't, what do, what do they use? That scares me. 50% uh, of buyers use a mobile website or application in their home search. 98% of buyers who used an agent viewed real estate agents as a useful information source. More than 50% of the buyers reported finding the right home was the most difficult step in the home buying process. 24% of recent home buyers reported the primary reason for recent home purchase was a desire to own a home. 9% purchased a new home due to job-related relocation or move, and 8% bought for the desire to be in a better area or change in family situation. This is 2014 statistics, I would imagine they're a little bit different now, but because there's, I guarantee it's more than 50% using a mobile app for their search, especially if they're working with us, hopefully they're using the Kelly app. Okay. So does anybody have uh, questions or thought, thoughts about these statistics? And you know, did anybody catch an aha on it? All right, 
Moving on. Yeah, let me move that over there. And twelve. And the next slide. We saw that. Keep the focus on the best homes. It's 13 and 14. So in order to have a successful home search process, focus on these three steps. Find the right home, show qualified homes, and bring your buyers to a decision. Truth, 92% of buyers use the internet in their home search process. There's no doubt that your buyers will be searching the internet on their own. It's your job to help them identify which homes are actually worth the time to see. Your thorough buyer consultation helped establish exactly what the buyers are looking for in their dream home, leveraging that criteria using online property search sites to find several homes for your buyers to view. Set them up on a buyer instant notification system that lets them know when a property matching their needs appears on the market. Monitor what your buyers receive from your KW website and app through your back office tools and contact them when you find a property that they should see. Likewise, ask them to contact you immediately when they find something they would like to see. Continue to check in periodically to see what your buyers think of the homes in their search. If no homes meet their criteria, you may, you may have to meet with them again to realign their expectations. Keep your buyers focused on the top five to seven homes you've selected for them to view based on their needs and use this script. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, when we do find the right home, we will need to act quickly. I know you're going to have that feeling of, well, is there something better out there? But I have to tell you, the best homes sell right away because they're the best homes. Do you want to see all the homes or do you want to find the right one quickly? Um, I personally don't like taking a client out to see more than four homes at any given time because it, your brain turns to mush. That's personal for me. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but that's what I like to do. Um, and you know, you've got to set expectations, of course, because in these times people are getting outbid on cash offers and you know we've seen prices just drive up um, so just manage expectations with your clients um, qualify homes found online you know your buyers will be searching oh wait oh yeah you know your buyers will be searching online so when they call you and are excited because they have found the one remind them that you still need to qualify the home before you jump in the car to show it check the mls to make sure that the home is still available compare the features of the home with your buyers list list the five must have sheet. Is it really a good fit or are the buyers letting an emotional factor cloud their better judgment? If it doesn't seem like a good match to you, take advantage of the opportunity to further fine tune their wants and needs. Simply asking two or three questions can save you an hour of time viewing a home that doesn't meet their criteria. You told me that X feature was one of your five must haves. Two of the homes you sent me don't have that, a pool, I'm just saying pool. Is that something you're willing to give up? And then you make a showing appointment and leverage the trip by checking to see if there are other comparable homes that your buyer might want to see at the same time. Next page. Let's turn to page 15. Oh, we'll get there in a sec. Well, we're on page 15. Um, your turn. Qualify properties. Choose the best properties to show your buyers. And choose a partner to work with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so without me, there's two. So how about Juan and Devin and David and Terrence and Success and Anita. Everybody work together. Choose a partner to work with. One will be the agent and the other will be the buyer. Uh, the buyer is to determine the type of home you want to buy. And you can model it after your current home, a home that you previously lived in, or even your dream home. Come up with the following criteria. Price range, neighborhood or area, the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, and are there any special features that you would like in a home, like a pool or a hot tub or, a, I don't know, a basement. Um, the agent, log into your MLS and enter your buyer's criteria. Price range, use uh, the average for your area. In the neighborhood, choose one of the most popular from your geographic farm. The number of bedrooms and bathrooms, special features. And the agent and buyer determine five must-haves. And the agent and buyer, based on the number of homes that result from the search, refine the criteria until you have 15 or fewer properties. And then using just these 15 or fewer properties, further refine them with your buyer until you have a maximum of five to seven homes. This should take about 15 minutes, okay? So we will come back at five minutes after two. Everybody okay to do that? Uh, this is Anita. I didn't understand the name of the person you, you just told me. Success. Success. Yes. 
Okay, I, I guess I'm confused. I, are we working with someone or we're we just looking for properties? You're working with something. You're working with someone. You will work with success. Terrence will work with David and Devin and Juan. Oh, and got it. It's okay. Now I understand what you mean. Okay. 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 So what you do is you click on the blue box and um, you start a chat. And then the two of you can chat together. The blue box. I'm, I really don't okay. understand how this stuff works. <laughs> okay. Um, where the pictures are of people, where you see me, and yes. you see a picture of Juan, and you see Devin Green and David E. Lopez. Do you have that yes. box? Yes. Okay. So click on uh, successes. It says, I am success money. And then she's got a little blue box with three dots in it, right? Oh, okay. Okay. And then I click on that box and hit chat and it'll open up a chat box that the two of you can work with. Okay. Got it? All right, thanks. Uh -huh. All right. So at seven minutes after two, we'll be back.
All right, everybody, we're back. I just unmuted everybody, we all here? Yes, I'm here. Cool. Anita, I, it looks like I'm, uh, I'm here. success I'm, left. What happened? Yes, I, I don't know. And in, in my, um, uh, the first time I typed something um, to her, when I hit return, the message went to her, but the second time it didn't. And it could be because she left. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what happened. Huh. I wish I'd have seen that at the time. I'd, <laughs> I'd have gone on with you, but okay. Yeah. All right, so does anybody want to share how it worked, what they learned? Any ahas on that one? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to prepare to show homes. You got a home tour checklist and you're going to tour the home and home touring etiquette, which unfortunately right now there's not a whole heck of a lot of home touring going on, but that too will change. So let's go to page 16. Let's scroll down a little bit here. Um, so organization and the ability to guide your buyers toward a decision will make your home showings more successful. Prepare to show homes. Look at the showing instructions on the MLS. Always call the listing agent to see if the home is available and if there have been any offers. Set the home tour date with your buyer with a specific start and end time. Try to give 24 hour notice if possible. Check with your buyer to make sure they have EMD ready. If you have a buyer that doesn't have their earnest money deposit ready, they're not ready to buy and you shouldn't be showing them homes. Um, preview the homes and eliminate any that do not meet their criteria. Prepare and educate yourself about the homes and demographics. Be the source of information. Always, always be prepared. Uh, determine which route to take. Always showing the best homes first. Arrange to meet your buyer at your office or in front of the first home you'll be touring. Print out two detailed MLS information sheets for each property you plan to visit with your buyer. One for you, which is the agent sheet, and then, of course, the one for the uh, client sheet. Uh, put the MLS information sheets in order that you will tour the properties and include a home tour checklist for each one so the buyer can record their own comments. Make one set for the buyer and one for yourself. Make a copy of the five must have sheet that was filled out during the buyer consultation and include it with the MLS and home tour checklist you will give to the buyers. Help buyers view homes. One of the most important parts of preparing your buyers to evaluate the home is to help them understand the things that they should look past. As you ask your buyers for their comments on the homes, help them distinguish between things they liked and didn't like. If the dislikes are things like yard size or structure of the home, things that can't be easily changed, you want to ask them if it's a deal breaker. Um, when it comes to things like wall color, lack of landscaping, uh, discuss easy low cost solutions and help them see past the issues. Uh, have your buyers use the home tour checklist and guide them as to what to look for, look at in the home and to make comments. You should use the home tour checklist found in the Ignite Toolkit, which is, I believe, one page down. Uh, remember, every time you take the buyers out to look at a home, you're also preview, previewing the home for other potential buyers. As a real estate expert, you should be aware of what is on the market. We all know that. And we lost Anita. Man, is it me? <laughs> Here's the home tour checklist, uh, property address, and all the basic stuff. And when touring the home, this is a, you know, ring the doorbell, even if the home has a lockbox, unless you know for sure that it's empty. Um, but I'll tell you, it's been more than one time that I've walked into a house that was supposed to be empty and there was somebody there. They were staying and it didn't nobody told us you know it just says go direct i've woken people up it's scary um ring the doorbell even if the home has a lockbox if it's uh, occupied please ring the bell twice before entering record your own comments on your copy of the mls sheet have your buyers give descriptive names to help them visualize the homes individually example the great view house or the creek house or the fountain house or the smelly cat house i hope i never go to that house 
While touring properties, avoid making comments, let your buyers come to their own conclusions. Instead, ask questions. You wanna get inside their heads to determine if this home is really a match for what they want. Try asking, what would you change about this house? This can give you the knowledge you need to help them get the proper home. Help the buyers identify their perfect home by pointing out the benefits, not the features that align with the needs, wants, and values that you've already identified with them. Features are attached to the property, and benefits are attached to the buyer. For example, if the home has new windows, point out the benefit that not just the fact that they're new. New windows mean you'll have lower utility bills, so you'll have some extra spending money every month. It's a good one. Have the buyers rank the house that you have shown them in order of one to five. If you are working with a couple, have them do this at the same time to see if they're on the same page. This exercise will help buyers self-discover as to what is really important to them in their new home. And then finally ask the buyers, do you see yourself living here? Follow up with why or why not? And if they respond affirmatively, ask, are you ready to make an offer? And then hopefully they say yes. <clears throat> um, and also when you're touring with a couple, give them some room so that they can talk about stuff on their own, you know, individually, because a lot of times they, you know, that's what they want to do. Next page, home touring etiquette. Leave the house as you found it. Make sure to turn off the lights and AC, blah, blah, blah. Uh, look for and observe all touring notes uh, in the MLS or given by the listing agent. Be mindful of pets when opening exterior doors or going to the backyard. Seller, seller may not realize how dangerous their pets can be to strangers and you don't want to chase an animal throughout the neighborhood while your buyer's away. <laughs> that would be terrible. Leave a card on the counter to let the seller know you are there. If the home listing should expire, it may be good that the seller knows you actually brought buyers in. Make sure to secure and lock the house when you leave and notify the listing agent if you notice anything is wrong. Uh, benefits. Working with a partner, choose the chart below to list three common home features you might want a buyer to notice. Example, a new roof, fireplace. List the benefits of that feature. When called upon, stand up and read the benefits. Uh, I'm going to go into two groups of two. Anita, you can work with me. Um, you'll write down three features of a home and then any benefits that they can think of uh, for each feature. And when the teams are done, we'll have one person from each pair read the benefits and have the class guess what the feature is. Oh. All right. Ten minutes, we can probably do this in five. Okay. So I'm going to mute myself and everyone else and Anita you and I will text back and forth wait okay. well, there's only four of us now okay. uh, Juan and David Anita and Devin you two work together five minutes ready and go so at 2 15.
All right, everybody back. Y'all unmuted. Everybody back. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, cool. Thank you. What? Uh, All right. Great. Okay, we're going to watch a video now. This is Funnel the Favorite. So here we go. I can't hear. Anita, did you say you can't hear this? Right, can't hear. Okay, hold on then. Start again, we'll figure out why. Huh. That's all the way out. That's interesting. I don't know why there's no video. Oh, why you can't. Right. Well. Here's what we're going to do. I just sent everybody the, uh, the link for the video. So watch it. Right now. Cool. Got it, David. It's in a it's in the chat box. Yeah, I sent it in. The, I sent the link in the chat box. Okay. Anita, you got the link in the chat box. Uh, let me see. Um, start video. It says start video. I don't see the chat box. No, no, no. There's, um, okay. If you go to, do, 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 do. Let me see. Oh, I found it. Okay, cool. I'll watch it. Well, I'll watch it. Sure. I watched it already, but I'll watch it again so that I know when we're done. Sean Healy, and today I'm going to teach you how to create buyer urgency.
I'm done. I can't hear anything. I've been reading for like two pages. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry about that. I, I, I said it before, but I, I, I don't know if it caught on or something. No, sorry about that. Um, we're on page 25. Um, hold on a second, hold on. Delivery. Um, asked them to make an offer. Once they had clearly narrowed in on the highest ranking house, helped them focus on the next step, making an offer by asking, so would it make sense for us to go back to my office and do some research on house prices in the neighborhood to see what would be a good offer? Um, we watched the video. And if your buyers do not want to make an offer on any of the properties you show, make sure you understand why. Then be sure to schedule the next appointment before you say goodbye. Even if you have nothing lined up to show yet, never leave an appointment without scheduling the next. Um, now we have to overcome buyer reluctance. Once you've seen the best houses that meet their buyer's criteria, you may want to help your buyer overcome buyer reluctance. It's a common issue that many people experience when they suddenly are faced with the reality of making an offer for one of the greatest financial investments of their lives. Your job is not to try and sell your buyers a home that isn't right for them, but it's your job to help them recognize when a home fits their needs, wants, and values. When your buyers are sure they like a house, but are reluctant to take the next step to make an offer, reassure them that the simple step of making an offer is not as binding as they may think. What if prices drop script? Uh, you're most concerned about the price of a home or the monthly payment or the mortgage. Of course, the monthly payment. I would have to agree with you. Let me ask you another question. Do interest rates generally go up faster than home prices go down? What do you think? They generally don't. Yes, no doubt about it. In fact, interest rates could rise 1% tomorrow, right? Well, home prices would have to come down 10% to make up for a 1% rise in interest rates. So if you're looking for a $200,000 home, do you think interest rates would go up 1% before the house price comes down 20,000 in your price range? I would definitely agree with you there. So let's do the right thing and make an offer today. Uh, we want to sleep on it. That's uh, definitely an objection, but I think people should sleep on it anyway. Um, it's a huge decision. However, I have to give you fair warning with as little pressure as possible. If you're ready to write an offer on this home, other buyers may also be ready to write. Being the first to write will make a difference in negotiating with the best possible price. Is there something specific holding you back and how can I assist you with your decision? If they still want to wait, that sounds good. I'll call the listing agent first thing in the morning to see if the home is still available, and then I'll call you. Do you have any questions on the property? I can get answered for you. And do you have any other purchasing concerns I can assist you with? And regroup and rethink. If you've shown more than the average number of homes your buyers have not made an offer, it is time to go back to the drawing board. Whatever the issue was, now it's time for you to rectify the situation. Sit down with your buyers back at the office and review your needs analysis. Perhaps there were things you did not uncover the first time. Get on the MLS together and refine your search. When the, new, when the new set of homes comes up, make appointments to see them immediately. If nothing comes up, it's best to get to the bottom line quickly and move on if you're not going to get the results thereafter. Getting to the bottom line with your buyers. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, what are you looking for doesn't exist. So we have to make a decision. 
One, you can step into a higher price point. Two, you can adjust your expectations. Or three, you can step away from the home buying process for a year and see what happens. What is the best course of action for you? If they're willing to adjust their expectations, do a new search. If not, recategorize them as a low priority buyer and stop devoting your showing time to them. Exactly. Keep them on your campaign and tell them to get in touch with you if a property eventually comes on the market that they would like to see. Next. <coughs> Buyer objections. Do, do, do. With a partner, practice the scripts on the previous page, taking turns being the agent and the buyer. You guys are doing this anyway, so we'll kind of skip it. All right. Show homes. Page 32. Practice touring a home while pointing, while pointing out the benefits and handling objections. Imagine your faculty will ask, your, wow. Your Ignite faculty will ask for two volunteers, one agent and one buyer. The agent is mock show home by pretending the classroom is a house, point out the features and, yeah, we're not gonna do that either. All right, now we've got the action plan. We're going to put it all together. So complete your daily 10-4, enter your numbers into your tracker, continue to preview and visit homes to practice touring and identifying features and benefits, practice your buyer scripts and objection handlers, complete your mission for the next class. Prepare for your next class by completing the mission prior to the next scheduled Ignite power session, which is on Monday. Uh, download your mission for the next class from Ignite on KW Connect. And it's the same thing that you do every week or before every class. And create your call list for the next class. Take action. Real play calls will be made in the next class. Maintain. Notes will be written to all those you did call. Uh, write names and phone numbers uh, and tell them to complete. You guys got to complete that list and be prepared for the next class because it's mahogany teaching it on Monday and she'll kick your butt. Um, recall and remember, how would you qualify homes that you found online? You want to check the MLS and the listing agent and compare the features with your buyer's wish list. Look for comparable properties close by close that. for more efficient showings. And why is it important not to make comments when touring a home with your buyers? Because this will let your buyers come to their own conclusions. Um, it helps determine if the home is a match for them. What, What's the difference between features and benefits? Features are attached to the property, benefits are attached to the buyer. When raising objections, consider a buying, or why raising objections is considered a buying signal. It's when buyers raise objections, it means the buyers are beginning to imagine themselves in the home. So how many contacts in your eEdge database by the end of Ignite? 200. From ahas to achievements. Any ahas that anybody wants to share from this? No. So how will you translate your ahas into concrete changes in your behaviors? Example, you need to practice your scripts. Behavior change, find a script partner and schedule time to do it. Uh, list out the tools you will use to achieve your real behavioral change, an accountability tool time blocking on a calendar. And accountability is evaluate what kind of accountability will sustain your behavioral change. Is it an accountability partner, a mentor, your my tracker? Be realistic. The best accountability system is the one that you will use. And for achievement, think of the results you want to achieve. What are you going to do to get there? What do you have and what will you do? And that my friends, Got your action plan, prepare for your next class, recall and remember from ahas to achievement and enhance your learning. Find and show homes, night power session eight. That my friends is the end. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions Thank before you. we go? No, not so nope. far, no. Nope. Thank okay. you, Jeffrey. No have problem. A, a wonderful you. Easter weekend. Gotta try. Thanks everybody. Be well, <laughs> stay safe.
Okay. You Cover too. your face. Wash your hands. Right. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend.